joined with another guest who hasn't appeared on our channel before, and that's Mandiwe from the Port of Baira. What's happening? We've been growing consistently and steadily since 1998 when we became the port operator and uh, excited to have our concession extended by 15 years uh, last year in 2023. Yes. So more investments, capacity expansion. Port of Bear is connected by two lines. Mm -hmm. One is the Mashipanda line. Mashipanda line runs up to, or at least on the Mozambican side, runs up to the Mashipanda border, which is with uh, Zimbabwe. That's approximately plus minus 300 kilometers of railway up to the border. And that's finished rehabilitation? The rehabilitation is finished, uh, officially inaugurated in uh, November, if I'm not mistaken, of 2023, and, uh, and so far so good. There's the center line, which uh, goes up to Malawi. Uh, however, at the moment, there's 50 kilometers on the Malawian side that is currently being worked on to have connectivity all the way up to uh, Blantyre. Oh, that's fantastic. So that 50 kilometers, have they already started on it? Uh, on the Malawian side, I'm not too sure to what extent they've gone to, but I know that uh, I think there is some activity. From a port side, what kind of investment have you made? What are the tonnages or volumes that you're currently dealing with? Uh, last year was uh, a record year on, our con on both of our terminals, our container and general cargo terminal. So we did uh, over 320,000 TUs on our, on our container terminal. Uh, versus um, uh, slightly less than 280,000 in the previous year. So the growth was uh, over 25%. Uh, on our general cargo terminal, we did more than 3.5 million tons. So that was also uh, a record on the general cargo terminal. So volumes are growing. Um, and uh, we look forward to steady, continued growth. Okay, and then are you expanding any of your services around that? Yes, we are already. We've started with uh, expansion of both the terminals in terms of extending storage space on the general cargo paved storage. Um, this is to accommodate new commodities like lithium and pretty much anything else that can make use of, uh, of paved storage. On the container terminal, we're expanding as well. Last year, we had some of our team go to China to start having a look at uh, new gantries. We expect a tender to go out this year uh, for additional two gantries for our container terminal. Um, there's still some technical assessments being done uh, as we look to, to get the biggest possible gantries that the current infrastructure can hold. Uh, this is also important because we're getting bigger vessels, wider vessels. So on the container terminal, we have a 12 meter draft. On the general cargo, we have a 10 meter draft. Yeah. So yeah, you can accommodate slightly bigger ships. Why I'm saying we're getting bigger vessels is we've grown from a tidal port, I mean not a tidal port, but a feeder port where we'd have little feeder vessels that will then go to Durban or to Dar es Salaam or Maputo to onto larger vessels to now uh, a port with the several direct calls. Okay. We've now gone from a port that had only a few shipping lines to seven shipping lines. Already we're seeing a positive impact, making rates more competitive to Beira uh, and naturally throughput then goes up because there's more equipment and more options for our clients. What are the other railway projects that you would benefit significantly from? Well, one that would be uh, a game changer would be Kafue Lions Den, which um, the governments of Zambia and Zimbabwe have been discussing. I believe it's at pre-feasibility, if I'm not mistaken. So that would be a game changer because currently rail connectivity for Zambia and the DRC um, has to go all the way from Livingston down to Bulawayo, up again to Arare, and then across to Mutare, Mashpanda, and then Beira. But when you have Kafue uh, Lions Den connected, then we have the same advantage we have on road freight as the shortest uh, uh, port for Zambia would, would automatically translate because uh, would be probably about a thousand odd case by rail from Lusaka to, um, to Beira. But not to say that the existing connectivity can't provide a solution. It's still, it's still uh, in terms of distance, it's not too out of, uh, out of gauge uh, compared to uh, Dar es Salaam, for example, definitely shorter than Durban. The challenge at the moment, from our understanding, from the market, is that it can't compete with trucks. Trucks that are doing a thousand Ks, because Beira has this geographical advantage, uh, the rail at the moment cannot compete with the trucking race. And that's why we're not seeing rail from Zambia or DRC coming into 
and coming into uh, Mozambique or Beira specifically. Okay. So there's still a lot of investment and development around rail in order to see you guys get a lot busier. Hundred percent. I mean, we with the existing infrastructure, we we're continuously growing, uh, breaking records as we've mentioned. But definitely for the whole region, as the economies continue to grow, as we have uh, these mineral booms that look to be sustainable into the med medium to long term, yes. definitely rail investment has to happen. Uh, and we're seeing it already. CFM has invested in the Mashibanda Line, National Railways of Zimbabwe, opening up uh, now for open access, um, which we think will, will do a lot. And uh, we're excited to see projects like Kafua Lines then, you know, come to fruition. It's essential for us. Inland transport is a, is a bottleneck or a risk factor to how much the port can handle. So any investment that happens on road or rail is something that we welcome and we encourage and, and we appreciate. Fantastic.